Good morning. This is Mr. Willie, West Virginia. It's the first day of July. Oh my gosh. Where is the year going? Last night, folks, at Russian Winds Biker Church, we had a testimony by Dr. Mark Hubble, my buddy from Virginia. It was tough. Uh, we had a word from Brother Wade Robinson that was like, wow. The worship, the musical worship was, oh, man, it was amazing. We had an incredible evening at Rushing Winds last night. Uh, you know, most of us left exhausted. It was such a good evening. Um, you, know, you could almost feel the heaviness of God kind of hovering over us. And uh, we had some youth there that were excited about God. We had people that were prayed for and, and, and just anointed with a new spirit. Um, it was just a great time, and you know, and it, I had a rare occasion of actually having um, both my pastors in the same building. Uh, the pastor of Rushing Winds and the pastor Peggy uh, Williams from uh, Connecting Point was there, and um, and I had somebody there that uh, I have been seeing that's just very special to me right now. So it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal evening. But I woke up this morning with the Lord speaking something to me that, that was that was flavored in my mother's voice. My mother's been uh, in heaven for some time now, but she used to say some things that still stick with me. And one of the things she used to say, if she saw somebody that thought they was all tough or or somebody that was just acting like they was all that and bag of chips, she'd say that they just, they just full of themselves. And it just kind of reminded me of the fact that we all have things that we can fill ourselves with. And... Um, you know, we can fill ourselves with, well, I don't have to go to the list. You know what you can fill yourself with, and you know how it changes your personality or it causes you to go this way or that way. But the things that we fill ourselves with lead us to, to things. Um, in the second chapter of Acts, it says that when, they, when, the, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, all this is the disciples. Jesus had been crucified, resurrected, and ascended up into heaven, and he told them to go and wait for the promise. So they went to this place, this upper room, and they sat and they waited. Um, and, this is, and then suddenly it says there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. That's what I love about my, my Saturday night church. We call our, they call themselves rushing wind. I mean, we just, we just opened the door for the Holy Spirit to come in. And it, would, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And that's as far as I'm going to go with that, because I don't want anyone to get stuck with the whole tongue thing, okay? Because people get all messed up with the whole tongue thing. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, very possibly you might speak in tongues. Very possibly you might begin to speak the word boldly. Very possibly you might, there might be a whole lot of things the Holy Ghost will do with you. But you will change. Okay? The Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will begin to change. And it's not, I just want to encourage you all that when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, He doesn't take over your life. He comes in and He begins to influence your life. He begins to cause you to want to do things differently than what you did before you were filled with the Holy Spirit. He's not somebody that comes on you and just con takes control and you're, you're like possessed, okay? That's not what the Holy Spirit does. God doesn't possess you. God influences you. God is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He'll come and he'll just kind of comfort you and he'll, he'll guide you and lead you. But he's not going to just take over your life. Your life is still going to be yours and you're still going to be able to do stupid stuff if you want. The Holy Spirit comes upon you to cause you to want to do the things of God. Comes upon you and wants you to causes you to to want to appreciate the love of God. Brother Wade spoke a beautiful word about the love of God, and um, it was it was for me it was just confirmation. I mean, it's you guys have known I've been talking to you about the love of God since I started these videos. It's one of the most important things you can ever get as a child of God or as a, as a person on this planet. Is it it it, it really it does matter what you do, but to some degree it doesn't matter what you do. What does matter is that you understand that God loves you no matter what. The, the really neat thing about God is when you get to a point to where you understand that He unconditionally loves you, 
we run around trying to find people to love us. We run around trying to find things to kind of anesthetize us when, when we don't have someone loving us. But we never understand, and, and even when people can go to church for years and years and years and not understand that God loves them. And yeah, we all have our struggles. We have our fleshly desires. We have those things that come upon us that we, where we get selfish and think about ourselves sometimes. But the Holy Spirit comes upon us and causes us to do something that's really, really cool. Causes us to be selfless. And I, you know, I, 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 I'm a very private person sometimes when it comes to some things, but I have to tell you, I've met a lady who is probably one of the most selfless people I've ever met in my life. And we've known each other for, I don't know, 12 years, 13 years, and just kind of got away from each other, and we've met again. And um, the, the, the thing I, I absolutely adore about this person is that she's just a selfless person. She thinks about everybody else first. And, you know, when, when, when the love of God comes upon you, he teaches us how to think about other people. <coughs> most of us spend most of our lives, why most of us are miserable at times is because we're so constantly full of ourselves that we can't think about nobody else. That's why people, we get depressed because all we can think about is us. I used to be I used to be someone that was depressed. I used to be someone that would you know get so down. And, and what I would do to fight that was I'd find somebody to go do something for. You find somebody to go serve. You find someone to go do something for that's going to take you out of your mindset of this isn't about me. This is about somebody else. And if you can find somebody in life, or, or if you can get around a bunch of people that are selfless, boy, I tell you what, it's so much fun. I, I can tell you, playing basketball as a young man, when I played with guys that were selfless and that would play as a team, it was so much fun. But every once in a while, you get on a team with one guy that just got to shoot the ball all the time. Give me the ball. Feed me the ball. Let me shoot. I got the shot. It's miserable playing with someone like that. It's the same way in everything, in a relationship, at a job. In school, if you're around people that all they think about is themselves, man, all they do is, is they're full of themselves, it's disgusting. You don't want to be around them. Jesus was the most selfless person that ever walked this planet. And there have been other selfless people that have followed in his footsteps, but Jesus was the model. He came to seek and save that which was lost. He never came here for his own pleasure. He didn't come here seeking his own way. He, you know, the whole time he walked on this planet, you know what he was doing? The Father's will. He was full of the Father's love, full of the Father's will, full of the Father's everything. Everything he did was to please the Father. You want to you want to please God? You want to you want to stop being frustrated? You want to stop being depressed? You want to stop feeling like life is passing you by? Stop living for yourself. Empty yourself of you. And let the Holy Spirit fill you up. Then you're going to start to accomplish some things that, that are going to amaze you. I mean, where I am right now in life is an absolute amazement to myself. I wake up in the morning sometimes and I pinch myself. I'm exaggerating, but I want you to feel like that's what I do. Not really. I'm just so amazed at what God has done, where I've come from and where I am and where he's taking me. You know why? There's a whole lot less Willie living in Willie than there was four or five years ago. And there's a whole lot more God. And there's a whole lot more Word. And there's a whole lot more of His Spirit that's dwelling in me. You want to be successful? You want to get to where God wants you to get? Empty yourself of you. And let God fill you. Alright? Hey, maybe I'll talk to you later on after church. Uh, Dr. Mark B. Hubble will be at Connecting Point Community Church this morning preaching a word. He just shared his testimony last night, and that was fantastic. He's going to share a word this morning, okay? If you guys get a chance, come on over to, we're off Broadway in Clarksburg, all right? 10 o'clock. Hey, this is Mr. Willie. I love you, but more importantly, God loves you. Shalom.